today we are going to be solving a problem. So this problem is called shape times shape. You may have seen it before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through um, how to solve it. So I might pause the video at certain points through solving this problem just so that you can think about it before we move on yourself. Um, so the first thing I want you to do is have a look at the wording of the problem. And then we're going to have a look over here at the number sentences and we're going to decide where to start. So it says the coloured shapes stand for 11 of the numbers from 0 to 12. So remember that there are only 11 numbers that we are going to be looking for, a range of 12, 13 numbers, sorry, altogether. Each shape is a different number. Can you work out what they are? So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to write my list of numbers from 0 to 12. And you may notice that because it's 0 to 12, there are 13 numbers 12, and it's going to be 11 of those. So when there are two left over at the end, don't worry. So have a look at the sentences and see if you can decide which one we should probably start with. Now, I think the best one to start with is this one because it's three numbers multiplied together and it's the only one where there are three numbers multiplied together. So having a look at it, B, any of these numbers here, but the fact that there are three numbers multiplied together limits it to a really small number because the answer, of course, still has to be less than 12. So if we said zero times zero times zero, the answer would be zero. So it would triple square the answer, and it's not. So it can't be zero. One multiplied by one multiplied by one, the answer would still be one, because anything multiplied by one stays the same. And it's different. The answer here is different. So it can't. Let's think about two. So two times two times two. Two times two is four. Times two again is eight. So because eight is less than twelve. That's a possibility. Let's try three. So we've got three times three, which is nine, times three again, which is 27. So considering that this has to be less than 12, it can't be three. And similarly, it can't be any of the other numbers either because all of these numbers multiplied together will all be even bigger than 27. So that means that this number must be two. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of my 2. 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 is 8. What I can do now is just fill in all the rest of the shapes. Bring them there as well. So, cross off my 8. Now, this video, have a think about where is the next clue. What's the next find? So, just pause the video and see if you can find the next one. This one down at the bottom here, we've all, we've got the two numbers multiplied together. So all we need to do is find two times two. Of course, we know that that is four. So this orange oval is four. So let's get rid of that one over there and let's fill in our numbers here. So we've got we've got another two times four is eight here, and that's the end of our orange ovals. So now I want you to take this time to have a look at. The rest of the number sentences, the calculations, and see if you can find where we should go next. So pause the video, see if you can find where we should go next. Okay, so looking down here, I've got four red triangles that are upside down. Now we know that if you multiply anything by zero, we will get zero. So that tells us that this upside down red triangle must be zero. Because if it was one, one times eight, I would still get eight. If, I, if it was three, three times eight, it would be far too much. It would be 24. So zero times eight is zero. Then two times zero is also zero. I want you to pause the video again and I want you to see where we should go next from here. Okay, having a look at these two number sentences just above our um, red triangle sentences, 
can you see here that I've got a blue hexagon and a blue hexagon, my answer, and then I've got a blue rectangle and a blue rectangle as my answer. Both of these number sentences are being multiplied, both of these numbers, excuse me, are being multiplied by the same number and they are giving the same, the answer that they were. So I want you to think about what number, if you multiply it, <coughs> will give you the number that you started off with. Of course, it has to be, cross off zero, it has to be one. Because if you multiply anything by one, it stays the same, doesn't it? So that needs to be one, because <coughs> this number multiplied by one would stay the same, and this number multiplied by one would stay the same. So that means that that's one and that's one as well but that doesn't really tell us anything more about these numbers so I'm going to move on and see if there's anywhere else that I can find any number sentences that we haven't looked at yet that might hold the key to the next number so pause the video now have a look at any number sentences that we haven't looked at yet and see if they'll help us so of course, this one here we haven't looked at yet, have we? Now, this one, we're multiplying the same number by itself to get a different answer. Now, looking over here, I haven't crossed off that one, but I need to do that because I've already found out that this one is one. I've got three, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve left. So let's have a look at five, for example. To say that this is five, five multiplied by five. That would give me 25, which of course is far too much for this range. The maximum number I can have is 12. So let's have a look at the 3. 3 times 3 would give me 9. And that is the lowest number I've got left. So that must be 3. And this one must be 9. So I'm going to cross off my 3. Pop my 3 in that blue rectangle. So as you can see, my my number sentences are really starting to fill out now. I'm really starting to see more numbers appearing. So having a look over here at these ones that we haven't filled out yet. So 3 multiplied by 4, that would give me 12. Get rid of this one. 3 multiplied by 2, that would give me 6. Get rid of that one. And are there any more? No. So have a little think. Oh, sorry. I apologise. There's 6. And 6 times 2 would give us... Have a think about where we go. This sentence left, 7, 10 and 11. If I were, for example, to pick 7, that would give me 4. And that is too big. My range, of course, is 12, up to 12. So that means that that number must be 5. Cool enough to multiply it with, by 2 to give another number. And there's 10 and 10. And that's it. So my two numbers that I left out